All right, so at the end of our last video, we went ahead and added our first image to our uh, game scene instance here. And so we added in our background image, but we didn't really go into detail of what the code was actually doing. And so when we use this.add, we are referencing phaser three scene uh, game object factory, which gives you easy ways to create new game objects uh, based on the method that you call. Uh, so because we call the image method, this allows us to go ahead and create a game object that is an image game object. And so as we mentioned before, a game object in phaser is just the base object that has shared properties that all objects inherit in the phaser three framework. Um, so a good way to think of this is like when you position something in your game, you would have an X and Y coordinate of where you want that to appear on your canvas element. And so this is something that'd be on the shared game object. So the base game object uh, class, and then your image game object is gonna have things that might not be available on other types. Uh, so for example, your texture. Uh, so if you imagine if you're drawing a rectangle, we don't need a texture to draw that rectangle because it's just gonna be a color versus our image texture will be applied to this uh, image here, um, as well as like frame data. So if you imagine you load in a sprite sheet, you might have multiple frames. You might only wanna use a single frame when you render out this image. Another good way to think about it is um, if you have like a sprite, there will be animations involved with that versus your image, it's very static. So that's not going to have animated related properties. And so that's kind of a, at a high level what game objects are. And so your image game object is just meant for displaying static pieces of data or a static image in your uh, scene. Um, so it's perfect for things like our static background here where we're not going to uh, animate it at all. It's just here on the background. It's just the background of our scene. The next thing we didn't really go into was the um, arguments we'll provide when we call this method. Uh, so your first two arguments are going to be your X and Y uh, coordinates, so where you want to position this game object in your phaser uh, scene or in the phaser world. And so um, by default, it, when you create your scene here, uh, you'll have a camera instance um, it's going to bring out a piece of your world. Um, so your world, if you think about it, it is a 2D coordinate plane um, that can expand in all directions infinitely. Um, but at the center, there'll be a point zero zero. And from there, um, you can either go in the negative direction or the positive direction. Um, so when we create our phaser scene, our camera is focused on that zero zero point here, right here in this top uh, left hand corner here. And so when you position your game objects, you can provide this coordinate of where you want it to be placed. And so when we go to the right, this is the positive X value. So if we increment our X value, we're going to move our object to the right. And if we provide a Y value, a positive one, it's going to move down in our canvas. So your top left is always zero, zero, and your bottom right will be uh, your positive X and your positive Y. So depending on what you provide, your game objects will be positioned according to that. Uh, so as an example, if we come back to our code, if I just make this 50 pixels for our X, we'll see our game object shifts over to the right. And if I now make this 50 for the Y, it shifts down 50 pixels. And so this is how we can control where we want our objects to appear in our scene. Um, so because this is our background, we do want this to appear in the top left hand corner and then take up our whole canvas element. And so we'll modify that here uh, in a bit. So the next thing we did is we called the set origin method on our game object. Um, so when we render out a game object, uh, phaser uh, will render it based on the origin of that object. Uh, typically, your origin of your game object is the middle of your game object. So like when you have an image here, it's going to be right in the middle of how big that image is. And so when phaser renders out your uh, game object to posi position it, it uses that origin as the top left 
corner of where that game object needs to be placed. So if I remove our set origin uh, call here and we revert back our code, we can see that our image is now not on the screen all the way. And the reason for that is because now Phaser is placing our game object based on its origin, which is the middle. And so if you imagine the middle of our image, if we move this over and we times this by two, we take up our full width. So it's halfway across our scene. Uh, so our middle is in the top left corner because it's right where we told Phaser to place it in zero, zero. If we don't want to modify our origin, we need to tell Phaser the X and Y position of where we would like our image to actually be placed. Um, so as an example, I am going to grab a reference to the width of our Phaser scene by using this scale.width, and I will grab a reference to our height by doing the same thing. And so now when we do that, we can see that our image is now placed how we want it to look in our phaser scene. But we're no longer positioning at position zero, zero. We're now positioning at the very center of our phaser scene. Uh, so what we did here is we referenced the scale manager and on the scale manager in phaser, you can get a reference to your game's width and your game's height based on the overall configuration. Um, and so it's a nice utility method to easily position objects based on the overall scene without having to reference a hard-coded value. Uh, so example, uh, 1024, I wouldn't have to remember that. I could just get it based on how the scene is defined. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna revert this back to zero, zero real quick. And so if we don't modify the origin of our game object, we'll see our object is in the top left hand corner here. And the other way we can position the object is we can move the origin ourselves. And so on our image game object, if we use that set origin method, uh, we have the opportunity to specify an X and Y value uh, for where we want that origin to be moved to. So this would allow us to do things like place the origin in the top left hand corner, top middle, top right, uh, basically anywhere you want it to be positioned, as long as you give it that value between zero and one. So when we do zero, this is going to be the top left corner of our game object versus if we did one, one, this is going to be the bottom right hand corner of our game object. So because it's in the bottom right hand corner, when we use that, nothing's displayed on our canvas because everything's displayed off to the top left. And so there is a shorthand. If you only specify one value here, Phaser will duplicate that and apply it to both the X and Y origins. Uh, so because I didn't specify the Y, it's going to use zero, zero, so our top left-hand corner. Uh, so this is something to keep in mind when you're positioning your game objects is based on that origin, uh, you will need to modify your X and Y values to get it to render where you want it to render. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit more about uh, adding our image game objects, the origins of game objects and how they function, what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify our game configuration to actually use uh, as much of our space on our scene as possible. Um, and then also to get rid of this black space at the bottom of our battle scene here. So what we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and pop over to our main.js file. And in here, this is where we provide our phaser game configuration. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just gonna add some values. The first thing we're gonna do is type, and we're gonna do phaser.canvas. And what type does is when you provide your phaser game configuration, if you don't provide this value, uh, phaser's gonna to default to phaser.auto. And what this does is the type determines what type of canvas context we're going to use. Uh, so for HTML5 uh, canvas games, uh, you have support for 2D games, uh, so your 2D uh, canvas context. You have support for WebGL, so you can do things with 3D and additional filters. And when you do phaser auto, phaser is going to first see if WebGL is supported. If it is, it's going to use that as the type, and that will give you different methods and functionality you can use in the phaser framework. If WebGL is not supported, it's gonna fall back to canvas and it would just have basic 2D game uh, rendering context. Uh, so there'll be some parts of the framework that you cannot use.
Uh, the other option is we can manually specify this ourselves, and then Phaser, the engine, will always use the value we provide. Uh, so as an example, I'm going to specify Canvas. When our game reloads, there should be no difference, but if we do look at our banner, it does it shows Canvas now versus WebGL. The next property we're going to specify is Pixel Art, and this allows you to specify a true or false value. And so what pixel art does is it will set the anti-alias to false and it'll round your pixels uh, for when you are doing pixel art games. Um, this is really helpful because uh, when you position objects in phaser, uh, it doesn't have to be a, a round integer number. So instead of 32, maybe 31.67. Um, and for pixel art games, that's not great because it will mess with how things are rendered and it can mess up the art. And so when you set this to true, it just makes it look very nice and crisp. Um, for my projects, I like to specify this uh, directly. Uh, by default, uh, it will be false, um, but I like to specify it here. Um, so that's way it's part of the configuration that I'm expecting for my games. Uh, the next one we're gonna go ahead and specify will be our background color. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set our background to be oh, black. And so by default, uh, phaser scenes the camera will have a background color of black and same thing i like to manually specify this um, so then that way it's very explicit um, as an example uh, like if i went ahead and changed this all to white you'll see now our background is white all right and so for our last uh property is we're going to set the scale property and what the scale property allows us to do is specify um, your scale manager configuration. And this allows you to um, auto scale your game based on the uh, scale manager and phaser. And so this is really nice because it allows us to automatically scale out our canvas to take up as much space as possible without us having to manually calculate that and apply the CSS ourselves. Um, Phaser can handle that under the hood uh, with very little effort on our side. Um, so to use that functionality, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is specify the width and the height of our game. Uh, so for our uh, Monster Tamer game, we're gonna go ahead and do 1024 by 576 uh, for our scale. And so when we specify that, Phaser will automatically apply that to the width and height of our canvas element. Um, so you see here, now our background image is actually taking up our full uh, canvas element. And we'll also see that our canvas now has properties set to the values you specified there. The other thing you can do on your scale manager is specify our parent. So I'm going to go ahead and just move our parent property inside where our scale property is. Uh, so it's supported on both uh, the root game object configuration and in the scale. Um, I like to keep it with the scale property. And then the other thing you can do with your scale manager, this is where you can specify how you want phaser to react. Um, so as an example, for your mode, you can tell phaser what kind of scaling you want to apply. So we're gonna do phaser dot scale dot, and then this is all of the modes that are available and each react a little bit differently. Uh, so for our game, we're going to go ahead and use fit. And what that does is phaser is going to go ahead and try to automatically scale our canvas element to use as much space as possible based on our initial game dimensions. And so our initial game dimensions is 1024 by 576. And so if we just divide those out, we can see our ratio of 1.77. And so Phaser is going to try to keep that value while it scales our game. And so now you can see when I resize my browser and if I have like a mobile device, our game will automatically scale for it. And all we had to do was specify that scaling mode here and Phaser does the rest for us. Um, so it's really nice to uh, get that out of the box. So now that we have our scaling, uh, we just want to go ahead and dress like down here where we have all this extra space. What we're going to do is we're going to have Phaser automatically center our game. So then that way it will be positioned to use a, as much real estate as of our scene that's available. And then also even out those borders. So if I do phaser dot 
scale and we want to do center both what that's going to do is phaser is automatically going to center our canvas element uh, both vertically and horizontally uh, depending on how much screen space is available so now you see as i resize our game object is positioned right here in the middle of our scene and then likewise it would be the same on mobile like that all right, with that, that brings this video to an end. Uh, so as a reminder, there'll be a link to the completed source code in the description of this video. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please consider liking the video and leaving a comment. Uh, to be notified of when the next video is released, please make sure you click on the bell icon. For more great Phaser 3 content, please check out some of the links on your screen now.